Hi and welcome. On this video, we'll be taking a look at the AI tools of Adobe Express, Adobe's new web-based beginner-friendly design tool. We've talked about its huge library of templates and assets before, but today we'll take a look at the built-in AI tools from Adobe Firefly. If you haven't tried Express before, I really think you should, and you can experiment with a premium plan for 30 days using my affiliate link down below. This is the third and final video on the Express series. On the past two videos, we talked about pricing, features, and showcased how you can create stunningly beautiful designs using the assets library. Just like parts one and two, this one is also sponsored by Adobe. If this makes you question my recommendation, which I only think it's fair of you, I invite you to check out videos one and two and learn more about Express and my partnership with Adobe. Links to both videos are in the description. Now, let's get started. We have four features to look at. Text to image and generate to fill, which honestly are kind of the same feature applied differently, then text to template and text effects. We'll mostly focus on these three, but we'll take a brief look at templates as well. We're gonna start with text effects because I had such a great time working with this and spoiler alert, the results were pretty good. So first I'll work on like an actual design, which will be tied to the brand we were working on part two of this series. You don't have to watch it to understand this one, but it would give you some understanding of the brand we're creating this for. The idea here is to make a social media post informing about an event related to Earth Day, which is April 22. And I want the focus of the design to be on a big text effect, mimicking nature related stuff. And you can see right off the bat, I'm getting some pretty darn good results. I'm mostly changing the style of the effect between realistic and embellished and trying different prompts with words like tree branches, green leaves, earth, rocks, dirt, and stuff like that. At this point, I had two directions I would perhaps take, either fully covered in leaves and greenery or a mix of greens, rocks, and wood. I would have to decide which one would be easier to composite because this is a big thing with text effects. They are not super easy to composite. It's hard to make them look natural outside of just a solid white background. You cannot see this right now, but these text effects often have speckles of white background, which makes them quite hard to place, for example, on top of a darker image. After like half an hour messing around, I ended up with six effects, which are these ones. And since six is too big of a number to try and test out, I narrowed it further down to my top three. Then I threw together a background, some leaves around to make kind of a frame, added more text, the logo, and the end result was this one. I tested the other two text effects as well, but in the end, this leafy one was my preferred. This was so hard to choose because honestly, there were so many great results, I kinda wanted to use them all. I really enjoyed working with text effects, even though they do feel kinda hard to use sometimes. Now, here's a list of other cool text effects I generated, in no particular order and without any context or composition. This is just to showcase some of the stuff you can make, like the steampunk text. Not super cool, but kinda cool. Tiger fur, which I guess this is pretty generic, but the quality is still quite impressive. I couldn't actually make fire that looked good, but I got this thing that kinda looks like it's burning. Yeah, I don't know exactly what this is, but it looks cool. Sketchy vibes, and I love how chaotic and messy this looks. And then the colored version, which I guess would be more of a doodle aesthetic. Now for my favorite ones. Not exactly a neon sign, but kinda neon, kinda 3D. I really enjoyed the colors and lighting on this one. This graffiti one was probably my absolute favorite. It just looks so natural and organic. It really got the graffiti vibe dead on. This tarot inspired one was actually on the suggested effects window on Express and just looks super mystical and esoteric, just like this Zodiac one. However, if you look at the animals for too long, they kinda get into uncanny valley territory, so ugh. I also made some horror inspired ones, so if spooky things are a trigger for you, I will let you know when you can look back. First one, sea monster. This actually looks absolutely fantastic and the color harmony is just super nice. Then we have like this generic horror thing with eyes everywhere and well, I don't even know how to describe this, but it looks really cool. This one is my late Halloween homage and probably one of my favorites. It just looks so freaking dope and the way the skeletons make up the letters just looks really nice. 
Then this is the last one, probably the scariest, most bizarre one, but still freaking cool. Okay, you can look back now. My overall experience with Tax Effects was quite good. I really think you should give it a try. Now, let's take a look at Generative Fill and Text to Image. We're gonna go back to a design we made on part 2 of this series, where I could have used Generative Fill, but didn't. Check the replay. But there was some cutlery that was way too much in the way. Thinking back now, I could have used Generative Fill to remove them, but oh well, you can't go back in time. As you can see, we have some cutlery down here, which is kinda on the way and looking weird, so I'll just move this paper out of the way, select the image, go to Generative Fill, and make a selection with the brush on the things we want to remove. When you don't prompt anything in Generative Fill, you're automatically telling it to fill that area and remove whatever is being selected, which is precisely what happens here. And I guess it's pretty well known by now that Generative Fill does a pretty good job at filling selections and removing, you know, unwanted objects or people from a scene. But let's see some other uses for Gen Fill. And here is my first tip. Be precise and don't make AI generate anything it doesn't need to. The more things it needs to generate, the higher the chance of it looking bad. Let's say we wanted to make a composition like that last image, a wooden table with cooking stuff on top. Don't ask AI to generate the wooden table if you can just place a wooden texture there. You're not only saving your precious generative credits, but also increasing the odds of making a natural looking image. Then we can select the area to generate something and type in our prompt. Tip number two is Generate one thing at a time whenever you can. Again, the more things you try to generate at once, the more difficult it will be to get a good result. Even though, in theory, you would spend more credits this way, I think in the long run you actually end up saving them. Like, I added these leaves to the corner and now I'm going to add a piece of cloth to the other. And this way I don't need to pray for both generations to look good at the same time. Tip number three. Don't select areas that don't need to be selected. Say we want to add a wooden spoon to the corner of this composition. There is no reason why we can't literally draw the shape of a spoon exactly where we want it to be. This way, we're minimizing the chances of this looking bad as much as we can. Or perhaps we want to add a piece of paper to the center. Well, if we want it to be rectangular, then we can just draw a rectangle guide generative fill to actually fill the areas the way you want. One last example. Let's add some headphones to this girl, which means roughly draw the shape of a headphone around her head. And this example is even better because we're avoiding gen fill to go over her face, which is something you definitely want to avoid. AI doesn't deal very well with hands and faces. And there we go, a perfect pair of headphones. You can hardly tell this was AI generated. Let's also add a golden necklace to her as the cherry on top. And there we go. Perfect as well. Now let's wrap everything up with text to image. AI generated images are on the center of a quite polarized debate nowadays. And honestly, I don't feel like I've studied it enough or have sufficient knowledge on this matter to give you guys an opinion on like the ethics of AI images. So I won't do that, but I will say this on my work, I use AI just like any other software, like a tool. It does not do my job for me. It only fills certain gaps I might have, either on my knowledge or on my budget. It allows me to connect things that would otherwise either take too long or be too expensive. That being said, and I think this is a stance I am pretty comfortable taking, I am 100% against AI that copies other people's work. And I'm not supportive of trying to pass AI images as your own creation, especially when we leave the design area and head towards artistic work. I think AI can be very valuable and it can be a great tool for us, but first and foremost, we have to keep our moral values on the right place. Okay, so I won't teach you how to write prompts or show you how to use text to image inside Express. It has a very simple UI and I trust you can understand how to use it just by looking. It's just typing the prompts and using the styles, moods and techniques to refine the results. Instead, I want to go over things you should use AI for and things you should not. Starting with things you should not. And by the way, all the images you'll see now were created on Express. First and foremost, 
Don't use AI to create people. The results are usually not good, and the reason is not necessarily that AI is not good at creating people. I think it is just as good at creating people as it is good at creating anything else. It's just that we know very well how humans should look like. So we notice anything that's kinda off. And this is like a general rule for, honestly, any AI generation. Anything that we are familiarized with and know the details of is usually a bad choice for AI images. So humans, yes, but also animals. Even though cats and dogs sometimes look okay, most animals will look kinda out of place. Cities and cars, which is something you would think would be easy, can also look very weird from time to time. I don't know exactly why. But okay, so what does look good with AI? Well, broadly speaking, nature. AI is very good at creating nature scenes. I mean, look at these mountains. They look absolutely perfect. Like, this is a photo somebody took. I wouldn't be able to tell this is AI. A soy field on a sunset. This looks gorgeous. A grass field with a big tree in the center. A rainforest with a meandering river. Just please. Don't ever use these images pretending they are a real place with a name. Use them for generic purposes, use them for replacing a background or just to illustrate a broad topic. Another thing AI is pretty good at are patterns and textures, like this white brick wall or this crumpled paper. This is something I use a lot in my videos and it honestly looks pretty good. Also nature patterns like this ones, they also look quite good. Something that can be fun to create with AI are abstract images. So ink splashes, or colored liquid swirls, brush strokes, or even something like teal clouds on a stormy sky. Now to wrap text to image up, this was probably my favorite use of this tool, which was to generate conceptual art images. This can be such a great resource to illustrators and artists of all kind, not because I think you should actually use these images, but because they can be used as references. You can use these images to create a reference board with different compositions, moods, styles and ideas, and kinda use this as a source of inspiration. I think especially for beginners, this can be a really good tool if put to the right use. Just again, remember, these images are not your work, these are AI creations. Don't try to pass this on as something you've made. Use them only as inspiration, only as a reference for composition. Now, the last thing we're gonna take a look at is text to template. This is a tool that's still on beta, so I'll review it as such. In here, you can select what kind of design you want to make and then prompt an idea. And Express will give you four templates. This feature is quite cool. I think this is a nice idea but the templates are still fairly simple and generic, so keep that in mind. I really think that with the assets library provided with Express, we can create far more interesting designs ourselves. These can, however, work as a foundation we can build on top, so there's always that. And I'm quite curious to see how this feature will improve once it's out of beta. And that concludes our last video on Adobe Express. This was quite the journey, I've grown quite fond of Express and I'm really thankful to Adobe for sponsoring this series. Once again, you can test Express Premium for 30 days using my affiliate link in the description down below. Make sure to leave your comments and opinions about AI in the comment section and let's keep this conversation going. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye!